Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Monday, September 28th, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, there's a couple of systems to watch in the Atlantic today, the first being Invest 99L in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, embedded in a large-scale pattern with a deep layer trough over the western Gulf, uh, bringing tropical moisture out of the south into the eastern Gulf Coast with heavy rain and flooding being a concern in Florida and parts of the southeastern U.S. in association with this trough. And uh, zooming in on the floater, 99L is actually a weak area of low pressure embedded in this line of thunderstorms on the eastern side of this whole thing and really just kind of embedded in this moisture streamer up toward Florida and the recon plane in there right now not really finding anything organized at the surface really no organized circulation to speak of there are some gale force winds over in the thunderstorm line but no organized low and this is not really expected to develop significantly or become a tropical cyclone during the next couple of days as it moves north into Florida. And this is primarily a tropical moisture surge, rainfall flooding event for Florida and parts of the southeastern states here with flash flooding possible as uh, thunderstorms train over localized areas repeatedly. This is the primary concern with this event, but not really expecting tropical development in association with it over the next couple of days. This is the WPC rainfall forecast showing again the heavy swath from Florida into you know Alabama, Georgia, parts of the southeast and flooding potential being the primary concern. And we also see a big rain event coming into New England over the next couple of days and this will be tying into the large scale pattern that will be interacting with Tropical Depression 11 which is the other system that we're watching in the Atlantic right now. Here it is northeast of the Bahamas already a tropical cyclone declared yesterday and uh, we can see the ridge there's the trough here and then the ridge to its east over Florida and on the eastern flank of this ridge is a northwesterly flow aloft. You can see the cirrus clouds moving from northwest to southeast shearing this system and pushing all of these thunderstorms off to the southeast of the low level center. You can see that better if we zoom in on the floater here with the uh, low level center clearly exposed away from this convection which again is getting pushed off toward the southeast by this upper level flow that you can see indicated by the cirrus clouds here. But the low level center does remain uh, rather organized. You can see the swirl is very well defined, very tight looking, and the recon plane did find a fairly low pressure of 1,003, 1,004 millibars with this low level center. And we saw this kind of thing with Hurricane Danny earlier this year, where even though the system did not have any thunderstorms over the center, the center itself was very well defined, which means that this low level structure can allow rapid intensification if thunderstorms redevelop over it in the short term. And you can see right now the mid level center, which is out here, still decoupled from the low level center, is starting to pull this toward the south uh, and it could help it start to restack. And if it becomes vertically stacked again, we could see some intensification if the shear lightens and allows that to happen. Now, right now, the system will not be moving very fast over the next several days. We have a giant front here, a big high to the north of Bermuda, and this trough over the Gulf is too far west to catch this thing and slingshot it north right now. So it's going to be kind of meandering to the northeast of the Bahamas over the next few days, and possibly even by Friday will not really have gone anywhere. This is the European Ensemble, mean 500 millibar height forecast and anomalies in color for 96 hours out. This is uh, for Friday morning. This is where it has TD11 on the ensemble means still really not moved from where it was, perhaps a drift toward the southwest due to this high to the north. Uh, but now we see the trough developing over the southeastern U.S. and that's what could eventually bring this north, perhaps close to the eastern seaboard in the longer range. Now if we look at the GFS, uh, upper level pattern. This is the 250 millibar wind out uh, to the initialization here. So this is valid this morning. So this is where TD11 is now. And you can see again the eastern side of this ridge bringing, bringing the northerly shear over the system. But watch what happens as the system drifts southwest and this ridge builds over the next couple of days. By Wednesday, we see that uh, TD11 moves more underneath of this ridge aloft. So this anticyclonic flow, very light aloft, um, allows the shear to lessen and this can allow thunderstorms to congeal over the area of low pressure. And again, with the structure that we talked about, we could see this very quickly strengthen into a tropical storm and intensify a bit in a pattern like this. It will have a short window to do this because this trough is coming in from the west, and so it could get sheared out of the opposite direction rather quickly due to the southwesterly jet coming offshore 
of the southeastern US, but there will be a window, a short window of light shear wherein TD11 could strengthen over the next couple of days. But it becomes a lot more complicated in the longer term because as TD11 sits here, whether it strengthens or not, its interaction with this trough coming into the southeastern US will be critical because this trough is going to become highly amplified. Here on the ensemble mean by Friday, we see a negatively tilted trough now over the southeast with a very strong southerly jet on the eastern side and a negatively tilted trough like this is rather favorable lots of upper level divergence on the eastern side and uh, the interaction with a tropical storm could be either favorable or unfavorable either TD11 will get sheared from the south and completely dissipate and get absorbed in an extra tropical non tropical low pressure that moves into New England here bringing lots of rain either way uh, it could get sheared to death or there could be a favorable interaction where TD11 is a fairly robust tropical storm moving to the north into the trough and like some hurricanes that have come up the eastern seaboard think Gloria, Irene, storms like that you could get a somewhat favorable interaction where you have a fairly significant tropical system moving close to the eastern seaboard bringing heavy rain and wind threats uh, on the eastern side of this trough and again we're dealing with a similar pattern that we were dealing with when Erica had potential to move up the eastern seaboard as well. Lots of blocking to the north with this trough sitting underneath. You can see the Rex block to the east here sitting along 40 north with the low underneath. So high over low is a Rex block, very hard to move. And so the system could easily make a due north track toward New England or perhaps even North Carolina in the longer term but there's a lot of uncertainty in this pattern because uh, TD11 will be drifting around very slowly over the next few days which means its location is uncertain in four days and after that how fast it moves and absorbs into the trough whether it's offshore whether it's more toward the coast rather quickly those kind of details hard to know this far in advance but the kind of pattern does support the potential for a tropical system if it's still alive by this point moving close to the US eastern seaboard by the time we get toward the end of this week. So this is what the NHC forecast currently has is a, a gradual track eventually accelerating quickly as it merges with the trough toward the north and perhaps getting close to New England by this time. But again, this is day five and the NHC themselves note in the discussion above average uncertainty with this system. This is a similar story to what we heard with Erica. Remember, we didn't know whether Erica was even going to be a tropical storm in the Bahamas, whether it was going to make a run at hurricane status near the U.S. East Coast. It turned out that Erica dissipated as it moved into Hispaniola. But with this system, it's a whole new deal. And again, the same kind of options are on the table. Will the system be alive? Will it be strengthening? What kind of track will it take in relation to this trough? A lot of uncertainty and inconsistency in the models. But right now, this kind of pattern does pose a potential threat to the US Eastern Seaboard. So, but it's still several days off if it's going to manifest. So right now, just something to keep kind of an eye on uh, if you're living in New England, there's going to be a heavy rain threat regardless of whether TD11 is involved. We'll see a lot of rain and flooding potential in the Northeast uh, either way. So be ready for some rough weather. As we head toward the end of this week, we may have a tropical storm involved in that, but details still vague. We'll have to keep an eye on this over the next couple of days, and things will become more clear with time, as they always do. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.